Hello, this is Matt Wilhelm from Yellowstone Fly Fishing School in Livingston, Montana. Today I'm going to tie a spruce moth for you. Uh, the pattern I'm going to tie today is a pattern that was developed by Bob Jacklin down in West Yellowstone, Montana. The reason I like this fly are a few reasons. Uh, for number one, it works great and it's easy to tie. It's highly visible. Um, and so I give Bob great credit for this fly and it's a fly I've been tying for a long time. And the spruce moss in Montana uh, usually come out, oh, in end of July, early August. Uh, they don't have any aquatic life cycle. Um, they're, a, a, they're a native forest pest and they do find their way to the water. Uh, and when they hit the water, they don't like it. They flop around like crazy and the fish really go nuts for them. Uh, spruce moth fishing is one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, and I highly suggest uh, giving it a try if you've never tried it before. So, what we're going to use today for a hook, we're going to use a size 12 standard dry fly hook. You could also use a 14. So the spruce moss are about a 12 or 14. Um, we're going to use some deer hair for the wing. We're going to use a ginger hackle um, for our hackle. Uh, we're going to use a cream colored dubbing. I'm going to use that one right there. It's a cream colored dubbing. You can also use any of these light colored dubbings that you'd like to use uh, as long as it's kind of a light creamish color. Thread. I'm going to use a white thread. You could also use yellow. You could also use orange. Um, try to stay away from the darker colors because this is kind of a, a light colored fly on the, on the underside. All right, so uh, let me get a hook here and we'll get started. One thing about spruce moths are is that it, it is an early morning game. Um, as soon as the sun comes up in the morning and when it hits the tops of the mountains and warms those spruce trees um, along the edge of our mountain rivers, and, and keep in mind, you don't get spruce moths in areas uh, that don't have a spruce forest. So you wanna be fishing in places that have a spruce forest. Um, the Gallatin River is a great spruce moth river, the Big Hole, um, any the Boulder, any of our, our streams in Montana, Rock Creek, uh, the Blackfoot, any um, river that has a spruce moth forest is, or a, a spruce pine forest is gonna work for you. And as soon as the sun comes out in the morning, and I'll add my deer hair first here, as soon as that sun starts to warm those trees, way up in the tops of the mountains, those spruce moths start to come out. And um, the fishing is usually really good from, you know, early in the morning, almost, you know, daybreak until, <clears throat> you know, 11 o'clock or noon, they tend to come out a little bit as well in the evenings. They tend to go away during the heat of the day, but the fish are still looking for them. But the insects uh, will, will fall to the water. And, you know, when they do, they don't like it and they flop around um, and the fish hit them pretty aggressively. So what I've cut off here, I've cut off a chunk of deer hair. And when you're tie with deer hair elk hair, you want your as it's relaxed in your hand, you want it to be about the gap of your hook. And I have a little bit too much here, so I'm gonna take off just a little bit of this. There we go, just like that. So there, I'm right about to the gap of my hook. And I'm going to remove, give a couple flicks back and forth to remove all of the under fur. If you leave that under fur in there, it could, it could sink the fly, it absorbs water. So you wanna get that out of those, those butts. And I'm gonna tap it a few times on the, in my hair stacker. Get all the tips evened up, and pull that stacker apart. All the tips are nice and even. And this is going to be what's called a pontoon body. And so what we're going to do is, is we have to have, over the eye of the hook, this will eventually become the wing. This is going to get folded over, so you have to leave enough hanging over the eye of the hook to actually make your wing. So I leave about a hook length uh, over the eye of the hook. And we're gonna tie this down right behind the eye with a loose wrap. And then we're gonna continue down the shank of the hook with our thread, 
creating what's called this pontoon body all the way down to the curve. And now I'm going to go back over that again to tie it down tighter so, and so I also have less diameter so it's not as chunky on the shank of the hook. Go over that a few times so it binds it down and return back to the curve. Now when I cut these butts off I'm going to leave them, I'm going to leave a little bit hanging off the back of the hook like that. Okay, so there's our pontoon body. Let me get rid of a couple of these little misbehaving hairs there. All right, so got that. So now we're going to tie in a hackle. And I'm going to take a ginger hackle. I'll select one off of here. So I've pulled off a one ginger hackle. And when we tie in our hackle, I like to kind of rough out each side of the hackle and make a little cut on each side of the vein, leaving some little tiny, little tiny pieces just left over. <clears throat> What's going to happen there when you tie that in, your thread is really going to lock into those and they won't pull out and you can use less thread wraps. Uh, to lock that material in, which is good for a dry fly. You don't want to use too much thread. All right. Another thing about this pontoon body is, is it really floats well. Um, these butts and this hair and the pontoon body on the hook allows it to float really well. I've got some cream dubbing here, and we're going to put a very thin dubbing layer on our thread because we don't want it to be too thick because we already have thickness from our... Uh, pontoon body, so we're going to just kind of dub a very thin layer of dubbing onto this thread. Maybe a little bit more down here. Just enough to cover up that hair body. All right, very thin. Now I'm going to start working this dubbing forward over top of the hair up to here like that. Now, when you hackle this fly, you can hackle it if you're fishing really fast water and you want it to be really buoyant. You can hackle it heavy. If you're fishing, you know, rivers where it's not quite as swift, you can hackle them a little bit more sparsely. But we'll palmer this, this hackle up the body. And tie it off. I'm going to move my thread back just a little bit onto the body and I'm going to make the bullet head. I'm going to pull the head, I'm going to pull the hair back and bring the thread around like this, creating what's called a bullet head and put a few more wraps on there just like that. And I've got a misbehaving piece of deer hair right there, so we'll get rid of that. And then to finish the fly, I'm going to do a half hitch first followed by a whip finish. Half hitch just to hold it, and then a whip finish to finish it. Another thing you can do with this, if you want to take some head cement. You can take head cement and treat the bullet head with a little bit of head cement to make it a little more durable. But as this fly stands, as it is right now, it's a very durable fly. Um, it floats well, it's very visible, and it works well in our western streams during our spruce fly hatch. Thank you.